Good evening, good evening everybody. Um, we're here for the Planning Advisory Committee for October 18th, 2022. It's just after seven. I'd like to call a meeting to order. Um, certainly like to recognize a, 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 a new member, Karen Gadette. Thank you, Karen, for joining us this evening. Um, always great to have uh, additional citizen reps uh, on the on the committee and look, I'm sure you're looking forward to, to all, of, all the hard work we're gonna be doing. So it'll be an interesting journey, so welcome. So uh, item number two, land acknowledgement. Um, I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are on the traditional lands of, of, the, of, um, of the Acadia First Nation, part of Mi'kmaq, the ancestral territory of the Mi'kmaq people. So I'll move to item three, approval of the agenda. Do we have a mover for the agenda or any additions to the agenda? Yes, Warner. I'd like to, if we could, Trevor, add uh, year-to-date uh, development activity to the agenda just to uh, give the, uh, the citizen representatives a refresher on where we stand right now. Okay, thank you. So um, what I'll have is I'll have, um, if it's okay by everybody else, we'll, we'll do it sort of almost informally, but if everybody's all right with that, we can have a mover as amended. I'll move as amended. Okay, Patty's okay. moving as amended and a seconder. Lauren, Lauren, Council Lauren Cushing, uh, seconds. All those, in, any conversation or any additional discussion about it? All those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed? Motion carried, thank you. So approval of the minutes, item four. Um, we'll need a mover and a seconder for both of the uh, both of the sets of minutes. Nick, you're moving uh, approval I'll move of- both. I'll move both. Okay, thank you. A seconder? Yeah, Councillor Cushing. And so we've got the- uh, We've got the approval of the two uh, sets of minutes on the floor. A any comments, any, any revisions required? Okay. Seeing none, um, call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Motion, motion approved. Uh, business arising from minute, minutes, which is number five. Uh, there's none. And uh, and Warner, perhaps that addition we'll put uh, we'll put uh, we'll have a, a seven point seven point two item. So we'll place that there. Um, business arising from minutes. There's none. Uh, items for discussion or approval. Other items seven point one. Correspondence small home options. And I'll go first to our CEO, and then perhaps to to even Caroline after that for for some uh, background, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, thank you uh, through you to the members uh, for indulging my low bandwidth. And so I don't have my video on, but I wanted to file this correspondence with the PAC, even though it was written to um, chief administrative officers and clerks, just so that the PAC had an awareness that the province has created a statement of provincial interest around the treatment of small option options homes um, as they phase out kind of the institutional approach to supporting people with certain ability levels. And so as um, the members may have seen in the correspondence, um, I, I'm surmising that there may have been um, some treatment of these types of homes, which are essentially single family dwellings, um, that, that was a little bit different than, a, than, you know, just the treatment of a single family dwelling. And so the statement of provincial interest gives guidance to municipalities in terms of what can and cannot be done. And so um, in the district of Yarmouth and Roger and Caroline will probably um, add to this and build this out, but in the district of Yarmouth, we, we, um, we don't treat uh, these homes any differently. Our uh, land use bylaw municipal planning strategy doesn't uh, have a specific term that defines a small options home um, separately. And so um, I don't think that uh, we were in any danger of kind of being out of bounds with respect to the statement of provincial interest on that. But I did want to file it with the PAC so you had an awareness um, around that and just confirm, like I said, that uh, the District of Yarmouth is on side with the province. Thank you, Ms. Brooks. Um, any additional comment uh, from, from staff? 
Any um, questions? Just, yeah, yeah just, say, just to confirm that uh, I agree completely with Victoria. I think we're in a good place when it comes to these homes. Okay, excellent. Yeah, and and uh, obviously, um, you know, our our docks speak a lot more about population density rather than uh, than um, you know occupancy that, that that those types of things. So, you know, good pieces. Any any questions around the correspondence? Comment. Okay, there being none, uh, we'll move on to item seven point two, and um, that's that's a, that's a that's a conversation about overall development agreements. So I think that does not overall development agreements, overall development levels. And perhaps I'll have our, our CAO uh, speak to that first and then perhaps Mr. Vine. Sure, so thank you, Mr. Chair. And I don't, I don't have um, the last report uh, in, in front of me. I, I can share that it has been, you know, fairly busy with as of right developments for sure. Um, there's been a great deal of subdivision work happening. Um, which uh, speaks to development that could be coming down the line for sure. Um, what I could suggest is, you know, maybe Roger and Caroline can give an informal kind of anecdotal um, update to the PAC. But what we can do is for the next meeting, Mr. Chairs, we can generate the report that we deliver to council, which provides some information by district in the municipality and by type of development. So we can definitely um, bring that forward to the PAC as an information item. Absolutely, that would be helpful. So we'll pass things over to, uh, to Roger and Caroline for some comment. I think I'll just, you know, I, I have, for, for, my, for my part, we've just been extremely busy for the last two years and I've never seen so much development. Um, in terms of not just numbers of permits, but also in terms of dollar values um, and just different kinds of uh, permits that have been uh, recently all as of right so we were able to just issue the permits if they meet all the met all the requirements um, um, some were larger developments but they too were as of right so it just happens to be the way things are going right now but we are super busy with subdivisions and as victoria says that's always an early indicator for me that when we have this many subdivisions coming in people are going to want to do things um, but they have to wait for those to go through first so i, I think uh, a lot of what i'm saying is just echoing what victoria stated and certainly is, there's no problem with creating that report that Victoria mentioned. And, and I'll just clarify um, for, for folks that are, are watching, when, when uh, Mr. Vine is talking about subdivision, it's not you know, expressly the subdivision development like in terms of large subdivisions with multiple lots like that uh, um, um, you know, a, a business may de be developing subdivision he's referring to is is the breaking up of a parcel of land into two or more pieces or in two or more pieces to to develop it uh, presumably so you know you may have a five acre lot and somebody um, um, develops an acre of that and therefore it needs to be subdiv subdivided and and uh, there are some uh, dollars that, that flow to the municipality when that's done now uh, and, and the, the re rationale being is that you know those additional um, developments, houses, um, subdivisions, like literally subdivisions or any other type of development does put a load on, uh, on municipal services. For instance, uh, uh, the municipality over the last number of years has participated in uh, bringing high-speed internet um, uh, to almost everybody in the municipality. We've still got a few people out there that, that's got to be uh, uh, gotten out to, but that there is a cost associated with that, a municipally born cost. So uh, in, additional to, in addition to provincial and federal help. So uh, that's what uh, Mr. Vine means by that. Yeah. And uh, I, I will say, uh, Mr. Camo, um, um, Member Camo, he, he, we had a, a, a series of emails uh, that, that were exchanged earlier on and, and the population growth to Roger's point, we, we don't know necessarily what's underpinning the growth Absolutely, um, that's kind of tough, but generally the population of Nova Scotia is growing pretty robustly. Uh, there's a lot of immigration. Um, some of that um, is, is, is certainly showing up in, in our numbers, which is a good thing. And some of it's inter, uh, interprovincial, uh, uh, certainly uh, movement of, of people. We, we've got a big net uh, positive on the, 
on interprovincial migration, that type of thing of, of, of folks. So that plays in our favor too. So I think those are all things that maybe PAC and council can, can talk about moving forward in terms of, you know, what, what, are, what are our development, uh, um, you know, what are our bylaws and, uh, um, you know, planning docs look like to, to encourage growth and, uh, and grow yarn. So, yeah. Any additional comments or questions for, for Roger or Car Caroline, you've got, uh, got a comment? Oh, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, from our perspective, we're coming up on almost two years uh, now that CND has been providing uh, planning services to the municipality. And uh, I think part with that amount of time, we've gotten very comfortable working with Roger and also with knowing council's priorities. So Roger and I do speak um, regularly. <laughs> and whenever there is a new development or a question that doesn't quite fit or he's not sure how to handle it, um, him and I often sit and strategize about ways that, that the development could go through. And I think that's why you're seeing a lot more as of right happening is if we see something that we think just makes sense and we know that it fits within council's priorities and um, and kind of the things that the PAC has discussed, then we do our best to try and, and help it move forward as it, um, without actually having to do an amendment or a development agreement if possible. Um, uh, I, I also um, just wanted to mention that uh, the municipality's population growth is is growing, and I think it's around two percent, uh, which is very comparable to what's to the Nova Scotia growth rate right now. Um, so, so that is that's awesome. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to provide that information as well um, before your discussion. Any additional questions or discussion? Yeah, uh, Warner. Uh, yeah, um, I circulated the email to everyone, Trevor, and I guess uh, not necessarily concerned, but I want to make sure that we're positioning ourselves to be ready to capitalize on the population growth that the pop that the province is aiming for over the next couple of decades. And um, I also I look forward to the report because I'd like to get an idea on how we're doing commercial wise as far as development is concerned. Because I. I kind of watch the real estate listings and what goes on. And I've got a feeling that commercially, not just the municipality of Yarmouth, but the town of Yarmouth, or perhaps even the municipality of Argyle are missing the boat a little bit and the commercial development isn't coming along. Now, maybe it will follow the residential as our population grows, but I, I think we've got to prepare ourselves for that and, and, uh, and look at moving forward there somehow. And I want to make sure that we as a, a municipality and the citizens of the municipality, we aren't, we aren't sending the wrong message to uh, commercial developers that we actually are sending the messages we want to see things happen because we've said no a couple of times in the last little while. And I'm hoping that we haven't created a negative vibe in the community. Yeah, and, and Warner, absolutely correct. Um, you know, we do need to be careful as a, as a PAC and, and as a council uh, that, that we, you know, we, we encourage uh, and promote uh, business development and uh, construction and, and move forward on jobs and economic growth. Um, I think I would agree with you. You need to think long and hard before you refuse a development. There has to be some really good sort of reasons grounded in, in evidence um, before you uh, before we uh, take, take such action. So maybe I'll just call on Victoria to talk a little bit about some of the tax incentives we have. Uh, Warner is correct that uh, we are struggling on the commercial assessment side a little bit. It's it's a it's a low percent of our overall assessment. Uh, we have much more residential assessment. Of course, a lot of the, the commercial stuff is in town, but uh, we have made some gains uh, on that front, and we have changed some policies. So maybe you could talk about the tax incentive that we offer Victoria, as well as the um, the uh, the uh, FedEx building that's. Uh, it's being constructed currently in our business park. I think those couple of things we should make PAC aware of and the sure. public. Yeah, sure, I can do that. So um, in the Municipal Government Act, um, a mechanism was made available to municipalities in Nova Scotia around about, I wanna say 2017, 18, somewhere in there, called Commercial Development District Improvement. 
And um, that power that was provided in the Municipal Government Act was specifically designed to allow municipalities through a bylaw um, to provide property tax rebates um, to commercial property owners, um, whether it was greenfield development or whether it was capital improvements, um, anything that was valued at $100,000 or more, the um, incremental difference in the commercial taxation between the pre pre-project and post-project value, that amount of property tax could be rebated in a declining balance over 10 years. Now there was a caveat in the Municipal Government Act and it's interpreted to be understood that zones in the municipality, so you, there is a requirement uh, for the zones to be created on the maps, which we do have, uh, zones where this is offered could only um, include areas where municipal water and municipal sewer services were provided. Now the municipality of Yarmouth has corresponded with the Minister of um, Municipal Affairs and, and indicated that um, we feel it's a bit exclusionary, that we feel like that power should be able to be used by municipalities on property where the owner can demonstrate a qualifying um, septic system and demonstrated access to water for the development. And uh, we don't know if that's gonna come in the Municipal Government Act amendments that uh, province is working on over the next couple of years or not. So we do have one file that has taken advantage of that. And um, that was the improvements made to the Hyundai dealership in Dayton a couple of years ago. So we do have one file on that. And that, so that's our main um, incentive. Now, having said that, um, most of you are aware that um, Dancor Construction has erected a facility in the Hebron Business Park and their tenant is FedEx. And so, you know, um, they, they haven't taken advantage of the CDDI bylaw yet, uh, not saying they won't, um, but um, council has partnered with them, for example, on road improvements that needed to be made in the park. Council um, advanced the timeline for those improvements in order to facilitate that development. And so what we try to do is to take a look at opportunity to um, Mr. Camo's point and make sure we're using all the tools available to us to parlay that um, in, into you know, reality. The developed lots in the Hebron Business Park are all sold except for one. And so um, the council is very hopeful that because those lots have transferred into the hands of private owners over the last 18 months or so, that in the next 18 to 24 months, we're gonna to start to see buildings erected on those, on those lots and then councils working on some plans to develop another section of, of the business park. And so that's an ideal spot for commercial development because the services are readily available in the park or are built into the new road infrastructure. So um, from, from a commercial assessment growth perspective, um, which um, you know kind of is, everything's interconnected. So population, jobs, um, assessment growth on the commercial side of things, they're all interconnected. Um, so that's what I can provide for you now. When we um, bring the report next month, we'll include um, the growth in assessment um, that we saw last year on commercial assessment. I won't be able to provide um, the growth in commercial assessment for this year until after the new year when the roll is filed. So we put that assessment data with the development data that we'll generate out of Roger's office. It will kind of give us a sense if we're trending upwards um, or if we're flatlining and uh, we want to take a look at some pieces um, and make some recommendations to council. But we can have that conversation when we look at the data. Yeah, and, and while I am about the business park is we've learned a little bit of uh, dealing with some of the more recent developments and um, what you really require to sell the lots and to bring business into the community is is much like you're seeing in Halifax when you drive by. But if you don't sort of deliberately think about it, the, the lots really need to be fully finished and serviced, right? Like sort of leveled off the water sewers there, the access roads in, because businesses typically when they when they come to a community, they want to have a lot more known than unknown. So they want to know what it's going to cost them and especially what the construction timeline is going to be. Um, certainly if you've got a, a finished presentable lot that's sort of leveled off, you know, as they do in Halifax where they bring in the big machines and they, they level a lot and, and they're all ready to go. It's all curb and gutter and paved and all that type of thing. It's just a matter of, 
of putting your your uh, business in that makes that brings a lot of surety around the completion date start update all those types of things so that's something where i mean council's taking under consideration and, and potentially expanding um expanding the business park a bit so we do have quite a bit of, of property there and uh it, it may be time for us to to look at that and the sewer and water piece that victoria brought up very very important it's expensive to expand that but obviously there's some advantages uh, to growth if 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 the sort of uh, public works type services are are expanded uh, to a bigger area those would be my comments any additional questions oh yeah mr mo um yeah um appreciate all the comments from from roger and victoria and carolyn uh, that information is very helpful and i guess uh, What's kind of going through my mind with all this is that uh, where we're currently, uh, I guess we're just about finished with the uh, the land use uh, bylaw and the and the municipal planning strategy uh, redo. Um, from my mind, if we look at this on a yearly basis and look at the statistics that that Victoria is talking about, and we start looking at the municipal planning strategy as a living document so that maybe we tweak it every year or every couple of years so that we keep it current and keep it moving. So we're not waiting every 10 years to make changes. We're able to keep things more current and move forward more rapidly by doing things like that. So that's just kind of my thought. And it, it's sort of a, an idea of where I think maybe the planning advisor committee can develop a bigger and more crucial role within the community. Absolutely, it's important to keep all those docs absolutely current because the world's changing quicker and quicker as, as time goes goes on. So I think those are are certainly sage comments, uh, one for sure. Any other comments on the item? Okay, there being none, um, date of the next meetings uh, slated for November 15th, 2022. It will be the typical time, seven o'clock, and uh, we'll certainly have that one. And, and we've got an agenda item, one agenda item already, and there'll likely be more um, with the presentation that uh, staff's going to make about uh, you know the growth and that type of thing. And, and Ms. Brooks, do you have a comment? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So just um, kind of dovetailing off of what Mr. Camo said and, and on what the members can expect at the next meeting, Roger, Caroline and I um, have the draft MPS and LUB that Upland has worked on and we are methodically going through that um, clause by clause and providing feedback to the consultants. And it's our, our vision as it stands right now is to have a presentation on that um, with the PAC. We may be requesting um, a, a longer session, kind of like a workshop, workshop session, um, you know, with uh, maybe an hour and a half or so of work and a break and an hour and a half or so of work. It's, it's, I won't lie to you, it's, it's going to be tedious and a little bit painful to go through it. Um, but it, as Warner said, it's a, it's a critical document uh, for facilitating all kinds of growth in the municipality. So just want to give the PAC a heads up that um, that's in the works and, and coming to a PAC meeting near you. Well, I guess by this time I'm I'm used to having signed up for teething and pain, but it's all right. So that'll be that'll be great. Uh, the devil's in the details for sure, and that's how you move things forward by looking at at the at the planning docs and details. So obviously that meeting will be in person. I'm looking looking forward to uh, to getting into the meat of the the the, the docs and and uh, moving the municipality forward. Any additional comments there, Carolyn? Oh, I just wanted to say that <laughs> it's been tedious for Victoria and Roger, but Derek and I have been loving it <laughs> going through the new document and all the policies. It's actually really kind of fun sharing this passion with my husband because we have spent so much time talking about the draft MPS and LUB, and, and we're really excited about it too. So uh, I'm looking forward to talking about it with the PAC next month. Well, it is in truth really interesting, you know, sort of how those uh, documents blend in with the with the real world realities, right? That that uh, you know developers and all of us uh, uh, deal with in the municipality. So I'm looking looking forward to certainly to having those conversations. Any additional comments? Any potential agenda items for next meeting? Or any additional ones? Okay. 
Uh, there being none, uh, November 15th, 2022, that's okay by everybody. It's a regularly scheduled meeting. Very good. Okay, thanks everybody. And thanks especially to Karen Gadette. She's, she's new, but uh, um, I'm sure you'll enjoy it, Karen. It's gonna be awesome. I'm sure I will, thanks. Okay, have a good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night.